I'm at a home where there's a report of a bad outlet. What they say is that everything you plug into it won't stay. So we do indeed verify that this outlet needs to be replaced. Now, most people can simply remove this, get a new unit, and just follow the same wiring and get it back in place. What we must be really careful with is that there are no live circuits. Even once you flip the circuit breaker, there could be some live wires traveling through here. So how do we avoid being shocked? By having the appropriate tester. Well, thanks to the Home Depot Seeds program, we're looking at the Klein Tools NCVT3PKIT. It's an electrical test kit that includes a non-contact probe and a voltage tester. And we'll see how these two tools can be of benefit when replacing an outlet. Unfortunately, it comes in a welded sealed clam. So we're going to have to try to cut this open without cutting ourselves. Once we get past the packaging, we have a voltage measurement tool that does both AC and DC from 24 volts all the way up to 330. No batteries required, has built-in test leads. Then we have the non-contact probe, which has low voltage from 12 volts to 1000 and 70 to 1000, which is high voltage. It is battery operated. You do get two batteries with the kit. Batteries go in on the back. You simply unscrew the cap. Both devices have clips for hooking into a pocket. On the probe, you have voltage testing, so that turns energizes the unit. And you also have a built-in flashlight at the front, which is kind of cool because on some other probes, the flashlight's actually at the back end, which while useful, this is indeed much better because you can actually light the work area that you're trying to probe into. Um, you also get some instructions that come with the kit, which is very nice in multiple languages. First thing we need to do is install the two AA batteries spin off the back cap, take the pointed end of the battery, drop it in, followed by the second one, screw back on, and now you have a power button that is also a switch for the low voltage, 12 to 1000 volts, and if you press it again, you get 70 to 1000 volts. So it starts off at 70 to 1000, drops down to 12 to 1000, and then back up. You also have a flashlight at the front end. And you can run both the flashlight and the tester simultaneously. The tool will indicate voltage via audio and a red indicator light for high voltage. For low voltage, you'll get a flashing blue, which will turn to red as you get near high voltage. As with all non-contact testers, make sure you test both sides of the cable, because right now I get an indication that there is no power, so I'm safe to cut, but if I come over on this side, there's hot. So that could have been a deadly mistake. Check all sides of the cable. Before proceeding to the outlet that you want to test, go to an outlet that you know is on and check that to make sure this tester is working correctly. So we see ground, neutral, or clean. There's voltage on the hot side. We know this is a live outlet, so we know this tool is working properly. Meanwhile, back at our faulty outlet, I go in with the probe make sure that 
it is working correctly. So as far as I can tell, this is wired correctly. Now you say to yourself, if I have that tool, then why do I need this device? Well, what this allows you to do is to test for voltage, also whether it's high voltage or low voltage. In this case, I mean 110 or 220, because you never know, I, I didn't wire this house, so somebody may have crossed the wire and there could be 220 coming out of here. This device will let me know that. It'll also let me know if somehow DC got in here, though that's unlikely, because as far as I can tell, there's only AC running in this house. But in order to properly use this on an outlet, you need to take these two covers off. They're there for use with higher voltages, so to prevent arcing. And you just literally just pull this off, and I'll show you what that looks like. So to measure category two, we need to take off these shields. Um, just so that you know, the probes are held on the back of this unit. And all you do is slide up. And if you come back further down, you can actually store the probes out of the way. It's convenient, but keeps them very handy. So for our situation, we just need to pull these probes off, pull off the sleeve, don't lose the sleeve. Now we're simply going to place this back in the cradle. What's really nice about this setup is these prongs are now exactly at the right distance to fit into an outlet, so you're only using one hand. The way this works is it'll detect whether there's AC or DC, anything over 24 volts up to 240, and it'll light in stages. So anything between 24 and 47 volts will light this area. Then the next block from 48 to 120, 120 to 240, and 240 and above. So what it'll look like is, and let's see, it'll light up like this. So we have one, two, three, which means it is a 120 volt outlet. If it was DC, then we'd get a different color on this side, a red color. But this is strictly AC, so I know we have AC. I know that we have 220. So our next step is to kill the power to this and then take this apart so I replace that outlet. I've switched the power off to this bedroom, but of course I want to verify that it is indeed off, and there's no power. I'm going to fish around just a little bit because we know this is a really bad outlet. So, okay, as far as I can tell, there's no power coming into here. Next thing I'm going to do is take the faceplate off, then pull this forward. Then I'll probe around the wiring to make sure there's no power there either. The front cover is removed. We've exposed our wires. We come in with our probe. And I physically touch each and every wire, including the ground. Because sometimes the ground will end up carrying voltage when there's nothing on the power side. You never know that people how people will wire things up in a house. So I always just like to make sure everything is fine, including the box itself. The, th the box hasn't been grounded to a hot side. So thoroughly satisfied that there is no voltage inside this box, I'm ready to take that out. With the old plug removed and the new one in, I've yet to turn on the circuit breaker, but I'm gonna put a plug in to make sure that we've solved the problem that we had with the other one. So now plugs will fit in and stay in position. We're ready to flip the circuit on. With power restored, we do one final check. We put in our probe. That's not good. That should be going red. 
that should be going red. And that should be green. That should be green. So this is good because it goes to show you that the tester not only detects voltage, but tells you if you've wired this incorrectly. So we're going to have to turn off the power, pull this out, and make sure that the power is going to the correct side. The second time's a charm. We now have black going to the brass side, and we have white going over to the silver side, which is the correct wiring. So we're going to secure this into the wall, apply power, and test one more time. Power is back on to the bedroom. We turn on our probe. We detect power on the correct side. Neutral is neutral. Ground is nothing. Neutral is neutral. Ground is nothing. And we get power so we know that this outlet is fully functional and ready to serve this household. Now you're probably saying, gee, so this is just good for knowing that there's 110 there, not higher, and that we're not running DC in this outlet. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it's good for. Could you have obtained the same information from this? Well, no, because this only tells you that there's a voltage there and nothing else. This gives you a bit more information. It's basically a really, really cheap voltmeter. So without getting a digital voltmeter, an analog voltmeter, or a multimeter to read the voltage in here, this one little device does it for you. It's inexpensive, doesn't take any batteries. It's just something you just throw into your tool kit and it's always there for you. So is it worth a couple of bucks to get one of these? Yeah, just to be on the safe side because you don't want to be electrically wrong. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.